Okay, we're just going to have a few closing comments before we wrap things up. Uh, thanks to this excellent final panel. I wanted to remind people uh, that I will be, for all the attendees today, I will be sending you an email by Monday, maybe earlier, um, that provides a link um, to a web page that will have all the content. So all the furious notes you took during a Nokia presentation were in vain. Um, you're going to have a slide deck. <laughs> uh, I just want to summarize some of the key technical points. Um, the, the policy ones were just too many for me to keep track of, besides I'm an, I'm an engineer. Uh, so we heard about information-centric networking from Cisco. And what I really got from that was that we we're going to take these four disparate um, tech uh, networks that we've built globally for transport based on TCP IP, for mobility in all our mobile networks, for security in all the virtual private networking and everything else we try and do uh, to vainly try and make our network secure. And then all the content that's distributed everywhere and blend it all into one network. So that to me sounds very exciting. I realize we're in early days of that. Um, how that fits in exactly with 5G, um, how that's implemented remains to be seen, who does it and when, um, a lot of work to be done, but I think it's good for this audience to be aware of that. Um, we learned that 5G is not a technology that means taking all the 4G networks, throwing them away and putting in 5G. Absolutely, 5G will be built on top of 4G. 4G becomes a subset of a broader 5G network. Um, we heard about massively increased use cases. 5G, the intent of 5G is to support wide range communications, short range communications, ultra high band uh, communications, very low cost, very small number of bits per second applications, right? It, it, the idea is to support all of the above. Um, and then one of the comments made actually in one of the policy panels is that some of these applications, maybe many, will potentially benefit from traffic prioritization. So that is something that industry and government is going to have to figure out. Otherwise, we could kill a whole bunch of use cases for 5G. We heard about the importance of 5G spectrum harmonization. Um, and a number of candidate bands uh, were discussed. Uh, so I won't review those, but um, I think that's going to be extremely important towards 5G success. We'd love to see a clearer, uh, well-defined spectrum roadmap to facilitate planning for network deployment. We also heard that even though millimeter waves generate all the excitement uh, for 5G, it's actually going to be a blend of low band and high band in our networks to make all this capability come true. So that's, those are some of the key items, key takeaways for me. And now I'm going to turn it over to John for closing comments. OK, for, first, uh, very quickly, I want to thank my colleagues at Georgetown, Carolyn Brandon, Larry Downs, who did a magnificent job of assembling uh, folks together with Peter Rosavi. I also, and they had more visible roles today. I also want to thank my colleague Nathan uh, Lagrave and Marsha Mintz, who are responsible for everything right that happened today. Um, also, uh, we're sort of at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, I start thinking about two things. I don't know about you. I think about number one, happy hour. Where is it? When is it? How do I get there? And the answer is that there's a happy hour for you uh, at the Marriott uh, marquee just down the road uh, for those of you who want to continue an informal discussion uh, in what is referred to as a no host reception. I think you understand that, what that means. Uh, the, That's in the, lobby bar. the second thing that I think about when I, at the end of the day, is, is what am I going to answer when my family says, What did you do today? Uh, because at the Mayo family household, and I'll bet at yours, there's a discussion of what did you do today? And I started cringing when I thought that I'm going to tell them that I went to a conference entitled The Innovation and Engineering Dynamics of the Digital Economy, Economic Transformations, and the Expansion of Enabled by 
by 5G. So let's just all agree that's not what we're going to say, <laughs> all right? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. You, you sort of maybe want to follow along with this. When you get asked what, what you did today, you went to a conference on 5G. On 5G. Don't give the big title, 5G. And then the qu next question that's going to happen is your, your family is going to say, what's 5G? And we know we don't know what 5G is, <laughs> so don't tell them that. Just, but, but here's two things that we did learn today. We learned it's important. It's important, and, and you, can you can answer two ways. It's important, and it's complicated, okay? It's important. We've seen through the development of 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, that there is tremendous opportunity in this space for both personal growth and, and uh, business growth enabled by the emergence of the next wave of technology. And I think that's, so it's, it's unequivocally important. It's also complicated. We heard, especially from the technology panels, and I thought Peter did a mar marvelous job of synthesizing and making some things clear, but we don't necessarily know the architecture, the designs, what the standards are going to be, what exactly it's going to do. It's complicated. And I'm, as an academic, accustomed to hearing people uh, go through complicated presentations, and the only way for 30 years I've kept my sanity of listening to very complicated conversations like that is to say, what can I do in my own simple way to use simple tools to try to understand and, and to put a, a bow around what, what I've just heard? And let me just offer one simple bow that I have, and it's, I go back to principles Econ 101, to supply and demand. We know that there has been a burgeoning, burgeoning demand for spectrum and for mobile uh, applications. Uh, the, the reality is that as you get that, and we saw that over and over today with mobile broadband, you know, with one growth projection after another after another, we know that if you have that rapid demand growth and you don't do anything on the supply side, some nasty things are going to happen in the economic space. Not to be a curmudgeon about it, but, but prices are going to go up, quality is going to go down. You know that's going to happen. So what I sort of see this conference as doing today is, is to, uh, to asking the question and, and having a rich discussion, which I loved, of how are we going to address the supply side of this market? Or how are we going to address it on our technology side? What do the technologists see as the opportunities for supply growth? and how we best bring supply into the market, and from the policy side, how do we best design policies to enable that growth? So hopefully that's a, a simple enough explanation for at least where I think I might get a little airtime at the dinner table tonight, and they won't just drub me out and say they want to talk about uh, sports or something else. Uh, maybe you can do that too. Thank you very, very much for being here today. Uh, look for Georgetown Center for Business and Public Policy to continue to offer events in this space. Please give us your feedback, comment, write to us, let us know events that you think might be helpful. We just think this is a very important dialogue to have, and we hope that we can continue in the future. Thank you, and hope to see you up at the bar.